The basic structural unit of life is cell. The cells need oxygen and nutrients for living. The food we eat reaches stomach and small intestine and the oxygen we breathe reaches the lungs. Do you know how these nutrients and oxygen reach cells from these organs? There is a transport system in all living organisms that supply nutrients and oxygen to the whole part of the body. This transport system is the circulatory system. Circulatory system is also known as cardiovascular system. In this video, I will be covering the entire cardiovascular system. There is a subunit in the circulatory system which is the lymphatic system. We will provide another video on lymphatic system. If you need any other topic to be explained, please let me know in the comment box. Now back to our topic, cardiovascular system. The blood that circulates in our body should be oxygen rich to nourish the cells. Lungs is the organ that helps in this activity. Heart circulates deoxygenated blood to the lungs and get it oxygenated. After that, heart circulates this oxygenated blood to the whole part of the body. That's why we need two circulations, one to the lungs and then to the rest of the body. The circulation to the lungs is known as pulmonary circulation and circulation to other part of the body is known as systemic circulation. Now we know that in cardiovascular system, blood supplies oxygen and nutrients to the cells. There should be one organ to pump this blood, that is the heart. Blood travels through blood vessels known as arteries, capillaries and veins. Blood is composed of plasma, RBC red blood cells, WBC white blood cells and platelets. Blood accounts for about 7% of human body weight. An adult might be carrying 60 milliliters of blood per kg of body weight. The peculiar color of blood is due to the presence of iron containing protein known as hemoglobin. Let's look into the constituents of blood. One is WBC white blood cells also known as leukocytes. They are the cells of immune system. They provide protection against infectious diseases and foreign invaders. RBC red blood cells also known as erythrocytes. The lifespan of erythrocyte is 120 days. They carry oxygen to the tissues in exchange of carbon dioxide which is carried and further eliminated by lungs. Another constituent is platelet which is colorless cells and they help the blood to clot. For the pictorial representation only we gave color to the platelets. The clear fluid in the blood is known as plasma. We get plasma by eliminating all the RBCs, WBCs and platelets and other cellular components. Arteries are thick walled vessels that carry oxygenated blood from the heart to the rest of the body. The oxygenated blood enters the iota through aortic valve and this oxygenated blood enters through iota from left ventricle and then this iota branches out into smaller branches known as arterioles and capillaries. The largest artery in the body is iota. The walls of the iota are elastic. They help to maintain the blood pressure throughout the body. There is one artery in our body that carries deoxygenated blood. That is the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery carry deoxygenated blood from heart to the lungs to get it oxygenated. Capillaries are tiny blood vessels. They help to connect arteries and veins. Through these capillaries, the exchange of gases, waste materials and nutrients takes place between the body tissues and the blood. The walls of the capillary has small pores in it which allow the passage of substances into and out of the capillaries through simple diffusion. There are three kinds of capillaries, continuous, fenestrated and discontinuous or sinusoidal capillary. Continuous capillary contain endothelial cells and there are small gaps between these endothelial health cells that help in the passage of gases, water and sugar. In fenestrated capillary, there are more pores in addition to the gaps in the endothelial cells. They help in the passage of much larger molecules. 
In sinusoidal capillary, there are much larger pores in the endothelial cells. Veins are thin walled vessels that carry deoxygenated blood from whole part of the body to the heart. There are two types of veins, pulmonary vein and systemic vein. Pulmonary vein carry oxygenated blood from lungs to the heart. It is the only one vein that carry oxygenated blood. All the other veins carry deoxygenated blood. The systemic veins carry deoxygenated from all the part of the body to the heart. Systemic veins can be divided further into deep veins, superficial veins and connecting veins. Deep veins can be found in muscles and bones. Superficial veins are present in the fatty layer under the skin and connecting vein connects this deep vein and superficial vein. The blood directs from superficial vein to deep vein through this connecting vein. There is one unique vein in our body which is known as the hepatic portal vein. Hepatic portal vein carry the oxygenated blood to the liver, not to the heart. Hepatic portal vein carry the oxygenated blood from gallbladder, gastrointestinal tract, pancreas and spleen into the liver. It is not a true vein as it carry the blood to the liver, not to the heart. The rest of all veins carry blood to the heart. Heart is a simple muscular organ that pumps blood. The human heart is approximately the size of a closed fist. It is located just between the two lungs. And on the back side of the heart, there is a vertebral column. And front side, it is just behind the sternum and the rib cartilage. The mass of heart is around 250 to 350 grams. Now, let's look into the chambers of heart. Heart has four chambers, two in the right and two in the left. Right atrium and right ventricle in the right side. In between them, there is a valve, tricuspid valve. As its name suggests, it has three cusps like this. It opens in the middle. The major two veins that carry blood to heart are superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Superior vena cava carry deoxygenated blood from neck, chest and arms. Inferior vena cava carry blood from the middle and lower part of the body. From this ventricle, right ventricle, the blood passes into pulmonary artery. And the pulmonary artery, there is a small opening in the starting of pulmonary artery that is the pulmonary valve. The left side of the heart has left atrium and left ventricle. In between left atrium and left ventricle, there is middle valve. Middle valve is also known as bicuspid valve as its name suggests it has two cusps like this and it opens in the middle. And the oxygenated blood from the lungs enters the heart through pulmonary vein. And oxygenated blood from the ventricle passes into iota through aortic valve. And through this iota, blood passes into the rest of the body. Now let's look into the heart wall. Heart wall is composed of three layers. Inner endocardium, middle myocardium and outer epicardium. Myocardium is also known as cardiac muscle. There are two types of cells in the cardiac muscle. They are muscle cells and pacemaker cells. 99% of the cells are muscle cells and they can contract very easily. Pacemaker cells set up the heartbeat. The fastest pacemaker cells are in the sinoatrial node which is present in the upper part of the right atrium. Now let's look how this whole blood flow system works. The blood from upper part of the body enters to the right atrium through superior vena cava and from the lower part of the body enters through inferior vena cava. When right atrium gets filled with blood, then the tricuspid valve opens and blood flows to the right ventricle. When ventricle gets filled with blood, this tricuspid valve closes as to prevent the backflow of blood. 
and when ventricle contracts then the pulmonary valve opens and blood enters to the pulmonary artery which leads to the lungs now the oxygenated blood from the lungs enters to the left atrium through pulmonary veins and when atrium gets filled with blood the bicuspid valve opens and blood flows to the left ventricle when ventricle gets filled with blood the bicuspid valve closes as to prevent the backflow of blood when this left ventricle contract the aortic valve opens and the blood flows to the aorta and from there to the rest of the body the blood from left atrium enters the left ventricle at the same time the blood from right atrium enters the right ventricle similarly the blood from right ventricle enters to the pulmonary artery at the same time the blood from left ventricle enters the aorta this all happens at the same time and systole is in the cardiac cycle which happens when left and right ventricles contract and diastole happens when heart muscles relax and refills the blood if you like this video please share it with your friends if you have any queries put it in the comment box thank you